Okay, I, I'm going to show you something now that if it's what it I, it's, it appears to be, I, uh, it's, it's phenomenal. Now, this was photographed by a fellow in Australia named Rodney Warren. Very nice guy, and we've been working together for a little while here, not long. He's been doing this for six years uh, on these light experiments, and I've been working on atomic theory since they realized there was an atom. I mean, it goes way back. Anyway, Rodney has photographed this, some very, very interesting things, and this absolutely blew me away. Because my, my theory of the uh, wave particle uh, problem is, is solved by what he's showing here, if this is what I think it is. Now, he's got a laser light behind here shining through a slit. I'm not going to give away any of his details. There's certain factors about his slit and there's certain factors about his, his equipment that I, he, if he wants to reveal them, that's fine. I'm not going to talk about that. But this is what has been produced and I don't know and I've seen other ones we've seen other ones that he has that are not like exactly like this but have characteristics of this so it, I, I know this is recreatable at some some possibility but he does this a lot like I said it's been six years he's been doing this so it's not something I think you can snap your fingers and catch one of these here's what I'm saying is occurring these discs you see them? They're everywhere. And they are on the same plainish looking thing. And you see these, these rings that go in? And you see the colors? Red is more of a, of a lower energy color. And for some reason it creates this bigger plate. Now, violet energies are, are, are an intense energy wave and they they get up into the you know strong energy waves and they create more energy so you see the density of that wave compared to the density of these and the lighter this gets it, it gets even smaller than than you know they're right in the same frequencies only this appears to be exceptionally strong frequency for this pulsed red laser light and that's what this is a pulse red laser light and I believe somehow he's picked up the pulse as it emitted now there's a brilliant white spot there and it's a red laser now white is only supposed to be all colors together so I'm not I'm not sure what's going on there and I'm going to show you some things in the that are points of interest because I, I hope everybody looks at this carefully and comes up with their estimation of what you see here. But notice this, there's six rings, one, two, three, four, five. The sixth ring circles the center and they are a deeper ring. They seem to be flattened out and these two appear to be almost like hooked together. And all of this stuff is, is, is almost expected under the theory that I have of spinning par particle matter being a spinning vortex of particle matter solves the, the particle wave duality. It, the, the spin of the vortex creates the wave and the particle nature is the head of the wave which appears to be these plates. Now you see these bumps at first I thought they were radiating out from the center, they're not. There's some form of an interference pattern by these radiating beams because I can see them penetrating through here and they don't necessarily end up going to the center. So I'm discounting that. However, you see these things? They look like coming out on chains. And I don't, you know, maybe it's pulse, 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 pulse. I don't know. I'm not sure of this. But what I'm seeing here gives me a strong suspicion that these are spinning particles. And that is exactly what my theory predicted. And Rodney's picture here almost seems to me it has a lot of substance here. Now, I'm going to show you why I feel that this is representative of particles and, and the theory that I put forth, which is the, the wave, I mean, it's, it's called the particle, uh, I forget what I even call it, to be honest with you, the spinning particle wave theory or something. Anyway, it's, uh, it's online. I have a paper on it. Now, this is very interesting to me, and I'm going to show you the evidence that I have on the rest of this stuff. Um, that's coming up now. Now, uh, this is on... Um, 
chemistry of colors. It's on uh, just right off the web. But you see that? That's the higher end radiation that I'm talking about, the purple. That's the lower end radiation. We're only talking this little tiny slip of radiation that we're dealing with here in, that we can see. And it makes it to that visible spectrum. And the faster the spin, zzz, and it's not just an up and down. They think it just goes up and down like that. It doesn't. It goes like this. Watch. Around and around and around and around. And the faster it goes around, zzz, the f more angular momentum, the more more energy. It's just, it's, it's just totally expected. Now, I don't know whether the plates get bigger in diameter, which they do appear under Rodney's picture, if that is what it in fact is. Uh, I really don't know. But these wavelengths are very, very short. You know, you're only talking about uh, a half a micron, something like that, is about the, in the spectrum that we see. And then you go back this way, the stuff that comes out of all, 60 cycles per second, every cycle is 3,000 miles long. And we're looking at stuff that's in a half a micron range here. You see 10 nanometers up to about 500, 600. I think it goes to four to 600, something like that is what we can see. Anyway, that's... It all makes sense to me. All right, now, he, he may have picked up specifically what's called Cherienko radiation. And anyway, it's the electromagnetic, which is a spinning negative particle, which is my theory. An electromagnetic radiation emitted when a charged particle, such as an electron, zzz, passes through a dielectric medium at a speed greater than the, than the phase velocity of the light in that medium. Now, there's certain characteristics about Rodney's experiment that may account for this. Uh, and that is something that he is going to have to discuss. But this could be accounted for by, I believe, something that I noticed within Rodney's experiment. And I'm going to discuss it with him, and if he wants to make that known, that's fine. Now, but I see what I see. And here's what this Cherienko radiation looks like. I right, watch this. That's what it looks like. I mean, I don't see a whole lot of difference here. Now, and in addition to that, you see this? This is what accounts for the waves. Plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, minus. And keeping each other away from each other, it's going 186,000 miles a second. That's fast. And each... I, I mean, I'm seeing things that have a lot of similarity, a lot of similarity. And that's all I can say. Okay, here it comes again now. And you can always go back on your video and see this, but here it comes again. Now watch. Swish, you see it go? It went down and then it came back up. As far as I'm concerned, that was a particle and that was heat and because you have cold coming down, it tried to force it down, but the heat made it rise back up.